The opening of Promenade Park in 2019 was phase one of Fort Wayne's riverfront development. The park's popularity is now encouraging work to create more public and gathering spaces while growing as a regional destination. Last fall, groundbreaking began on a new riverfront park phase that complements the city's efforts to revitalize the area. And on this week's primetime, we'll get the latest on all things riverfront, plus an update on new work at Frankie Park. And good evening, I'm Bruce Haynes. And with us today is Alec Johnson, Deputy Director of Park Planning and Development at Fort Wayne Parks and Recreation. And we invite you to join the conversation as well. Just call in your questions or comments by using the number you see on the screen. As we widen out, welcome Alec to the broadcast. Thanks for being here, sir. Thank you, Bruce. It's my pleasure to be here. It, it really kind of shocked me in the first sentence when I realized that this Promenade Park was five years ago. That's right. Yeah. I would have given you three. Right. <laughs> uh, never really thought five. Uh, does it surprise you that it's been half a decade since then? It does surprise me, actually, when you say it like that. It does <laughs> surprise me. But um, I think that the reality of, I, I, and, and one of the reasons I think we feel that way is because people have really responded to the park and it's just become like something that we feel like has been there for forever, or at least for a very long time. So. It, it, it does make sense that we that we feel like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it. Uh, w when did the clock actually start when it comes to riverfront planning to, well, to get a promenade park, for example? Sure, sure. Um, well, to go way back, you know, it started over 100 years ago um, with George Kessler, who, who did the first city plan for Fort Wayne, which is based upon the rivers and 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 the boulevards and creation of boulevards, and so that was the first sort of discussion about the rivers. Um, and then fast forward uh, to, I think, about uh, 2007, we were starting to talk about the anniversary of Kessler's plan and what we could do, and we put together a, um, an application for legacy grants that, um, that was actually contemplating a, a riverfront study and, and how can we start to take advantages of our, of our rivers. And, and I, I've heard that that, that proposal um, gained the majority of votes of any of the proposals, and so that was kind of the first step mm -hmm. for Riverfront. And so we were able to hire SWA Landscape Architects, um, which is a world-renowned landscape architecture firm that does this kind of work, mm -hmm. um, to come to Fort Wayne to sort of set the, to set the groundwork and the, the conceptual plan for, for Fort Wayne Riverfront at a sort of conceptual scale, not detailed drawings and plans, but just a conceptual scale. And so um, we started with a really, really, um, with a great consultant and with a great idea, which was to reconnect people to the rivers. Yeah. yeah. I, I, when I think of the rivers, uh, it, it, at least two different kinds of rivers come to mind. One is the one you have to contain uh, with levees and be concerned about flooding mm -hmm. and, and it's cons constraining uh, that resource. And the other is the one where you're embracing that resource for yeah. the uh, community uh, and economic development opportunities that they provide. Right. Uh, you, you see it somewhat similar? I do, and, and we made a very conscious effort in this, in this riverfront planning, especially when we get specific to Promenade Park, but in general, um, to not fight the rivers. I mean, we, we're not gonna win that fight. Um, in the end, levees break and, and floods, floods keep coming, and so, um, we knew that we had to account for that that flooding, you know, that's just a fact of life And so rather than try to wall it off and and create more levees We decided that we were going to plan for it and we were going to design the public space to accommodate those floods in that water um, which would keep the development um, that wasn't public space out of out of danger and so that was that was sort of the shift that you that you refer to there, mm -hmm. where we decided no, let's not let's not try to fight this and wall it off. Let's let's work with it and understand that it's going to happen. You, your website gives some insight into how much guidance comes into the planning room with a downtown blueprint plus plan, a riverfront conceptual plan, a riparian management plan, yeah. plus public comment. How do you right. coordinate all that? Yeah, well, um, we've got a great staff in the city. Um, that was all hands on deck when we were doing this planning. It wasn't just the Parks Department, that's for sure. It was community development and public works and city utilities and the mayor's office. And so that's kind of how you, you, you have to go about it. And you have to understand that these are all different systems working together. Um, and so everybody needs to be at the table. And so 
like anything else, when you have multiple people um, working on a project, it's it's much more attainable than than trying to do it on your own. So it was a complex um, it was a complex problem to solve. It was a complex opportunity, and so I think we came at it in a in a way that that ended up being very effective. When Pramila Park had its ribbon cutting, if you will, uh, from that point to this point, uh, how has the success story been written? How do you mm -hmm. look back and and kind of measure? what reality's doing to the expectations that you had at the time. Yeah, um, well for me, honestly, the, the most effective way is for me to quietly sit in the park on maybe a, a Saturday afternoon and, and just watch and see what people are doing, seeing how they're living their lives, they're enjoying the park, um, they're doing things like proposing to their high school sweetheart, their kids are maybe even taking their first step. I mean. We design these places for life to happen, and and so that's the biggest measure of success for me. There's other things. Um, we 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 thought that the development of Riverfront, the public space, would result in um, possibly for every dollar that we spent publicly in ten dollars of private investment. Mm -hmm. That was sort of the promise that that was made to us from the consultant if we did it right. And so now we're also seeing that as well. Right across the street, we have a new development, mixed use development, Riverfront at Promenade, and we have lofts at Headwaters right down the street. We have another few developments coming. And so in addition to just those personal stories, there's also some, some economic proof that it's working. And it's uh, a public mm -hmm. park, uh, public input and managing that in the, in mm -hmm. the mix too. Uh, sounded like it was one where there was the whiteboard, and there yep. was an action board, and maybe some flip charts, but yep. all sorts of suggestions came forward. Yeah, and you have to have a lot of different ways to gather that input. Not everybody wants to show up at a public meeting. Some people would rather fill out a survey at home. Mm. Um, some people would rather uh, maybe just send an email, um, have a conversation privately, um, but the majority of the input that we got there was from surveys, it was from actual open house meetings where we where we talk to people and we ask them, you know, what, what are your dreams? What do you really want to see with Riverfront? Mm -hmm. And um, in the end, the message was, we want to be reconnected to the rivers. Um, we haven't been for a long time. We see an opportunity here for both recreation and, and as a catalyst for development, as I mentioned. Um, and so I, I, I personally feel like this was one of those projects where there was just an overwhelming amount of, of public, of positive public sentiment to do this riverfront development. Yeah, and as Promenade Park is phase one, uh, remind us what phase two A was before we take a look at two B. Sure, so phase two sort of uh, uh, jumped ahead a little bit. Um, we were planning all of the phase two together, but the lofts at Headwaters that I mentioned that's just um, east of Promenade Park, that was a parking lot at the time Promenade Park opened, a gravel parking lot. And so once that development started, we really thought it would be great if we could open up um, at least a section of Phase 2 at the same time as that development was opening. And so Phase 2A is essentially a connection. It's a, it's a bridge between Promenade Park and design-wise. Promenade Park is a very modern design, is a contemporary design. Headwaters Park is a Beaux-Arts, it's more of a classic design. Mm -hmm. And so this space connects physically, but it also sort of connects those two different styles as okay. well. Uh, we have a map uh, we'd like to share before we take our virtual tour, uh, just to uh, give you at home an idea of uh, what phase two looks like relative to uh, phase one and beyond, uh, give us a, a sense of context, a sense of orientation. Here. Sure, I'll, I'll certainly try. So um, you can see Promenade Park there sort of in the middle bottom, the, the bright green on both sides of the river. And then um, just, to the, just to the right of that, another, another bright green space, that's Riverfront 2A. So 2B is all of the rest of the colored area um, across the river there to the north and to the right, um, and then on the left, which is, if, if you know Fort Wayne, um, it's between the Well Street Bridge and the Ewing Street Bridge to the west, and it's between the Harrison Street Bridge and the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Bridge to the west, or to the east, I'm sorry. 
<clears throat> and, and this this really, uh, as you say, creates quite a continuum. And uh, in some of the material related to the project, to be able to say that it now allows the city to connect beyond its its rivers as well. Yeah, that's absolutely that's absolutely true. And we can begin to also use riverfront as a method or a mechanism to start to connect neighborhoods even to the to the north to the east to the west start to connect some of those neighborhoods through riverfront into into downtown well let's go ahead and do our walk through if you will you don't have to get up we'll do the walking <laughs> for you on um, this this time around but th there's a, a a great video we can share and and alec uh, can provide some commentary as we go forward so sure so it looks like we're starting here um, at the martin luther king jr bridge and we're heading west and so this is the the North Lawn. This is another area that um, is set up for lots of events, public events. You could imagine a concert here with the amphitheater seating, the city in the background. You can see the MLK Bridge there. We're cutting back here towards the bridge. Um, one of the things at Promenade Park that was most successful, believe it or not, were the swings. These gigantic swings, uh, bench swings, and so we've got three more of those here and we're going to back up and I think spin around, um, head back west, back towards Promenade Park and off to the left in this view is um, a new dock and looking back up towards the amphitheater here in this shot. Um, you see sort of a representation of some um, potential private development there adjacent. And now we're right on the river and we're looking back at this dock. So this, mm -hmm. is, another, this is another way for people to actually access the park um, and access the river and in this case, we've provided some parking, um, believe it or not. We've had a lot of demand for places where people can park their boats, tie them off and go get dinner downtown, go enjoy the park and then get back in their boat. And so that's what that is, the North Dock. And now we're heading um, west and we're going back towards Promenade Park. There's a pump station, um, that's a, a city utilities um, infrastructure there on the left and now we're entering the Esplanade and this is sort of the really active area of phase two, the most active area. And we've got the summit which is a, basically it's a boulder mound, a climbing mound. It's fully accessible. There's a path that gets everybody up to the top of that mound and we've got seating. Um, we've got a hammock grove which is something unique. So we're going to start out by providing hammocks and, and people can enjoy those. We'll probably take them down at night so we don't have overnight stays, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is just, just more and more recreation opportunities, but at the same time, this is probably, I can imagine, gonna be a very active active area. And um, there's, always, there's already some work on the shop building that's just north of there, um, some renovations there that are happening, and so um, that's gonna be a nice interface between that, probably restaurants and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so this is the summit walk. This takes you in a winding path, um, kind of up to the top of this, this space and, and the perch, which is sort of gives you a vantage point out um, over, the, over the esplanade. And then another popular uh, feature of, of Promenade Park was the Tree Canopy Trail. So we continue that Tree Canopy Trail again. Um, and we have, a, we have a section of Tree Canopy Trail that goes from Harrison Street and we're following that right now all the way to where that pump station is. Um, and so these offer amazing views. They get you right up in the canopy of the trees. We've tried to save as many trees as we possibly could mm -hmm. in the planning. Um, and we'll be planting tons more uh, as part of the, the project. And so um, much the same feeling as the tree canopy trail that we have now, but with really completely different views in this case. You know, it seems as uh, we're watching this uh, that it's easy to see why we are now a destination from mm -hmm. other municipalities yeah. interested in accentuating the positive benefits of their own community. Right, yeah. Yeah, I have answered quite a few uh, emails and phone messages, phone, had phone calls with other cities and other, other people in my role in other cities um, in parks. Uh, planners and designers and, and sort of sometimes when you're first starting in this process, it can be difficult understanding how to make it happen. So it's been fun being able to offer advice and we just saw there the get down. We've got a few of those in the project where there are again opportunities to get right down to the river's edge. There's a wetland boardwalk that, that sort of winds um, 
underneath the tree canopy trail. And this is, this is a really cool, I think, feature that gets people right at the, right at the water level. There'll certainly be times when the wetland boardwalk is gonna be flooded and won't be <laughs> yeah. accessible. It's a steel grate system and so everything will flow through that and, and it won't be a problem, but that's gonna be a unique experience in this phase. We've heard about the wedge, you talked about it. Yeah. Mixed use seems to be a significant dynamic in success around this right. uh, facility and uh, this is again an example of that. Yeah, so the, the wedge right now is just sort of visualized as a, as a blank box, but they're, they're working on that development. But we also have another dock here, another floating dock um, to meet that need for river parking. And that's something I never thought I'd say 17 years ago was river parking, but we do have, we, we do have a significant, um, we've seen an uh, increase in traffic um, on the river with people in kayaks and stand-up paddle boards as well as pontoon boats. And so um, we didn't have any parking in the first phase and now we've started to include that. And this is a nice little outdoor plaza adjacent to the new development. And we're not sure exactly what that's gonna look like. It won't look like that exactly, but um, that's the public space that sort of coincides with that. So that could possibly be a restaurant or something like that that looks right out over the river. And that is another uh, key in all this too, is creating the space where those public-private partnerships can truly happen, and right. I assume fertile territory. Yeah, I think, I think so. And while I don't live in that exact world of redevelopment and community development, I know um, just from experience and from talking to folks that that's what's happening. People are coming in, and when you do something right like this and like Promenade Park, yep. um, it's a kind of a no-brainer for a developer. And, and they work together because the more um, people that are living adjacent in downtown, um, the healthier the park will be. And so we knew when we were developing Promenade and when, while we're de developing Riverfront that this is gonna be a lot of people's neighborhood park. Mm -hmm. In addition to being a tourist attraction and something for everybody in Fort Wayne, this will serve as a lot of people's, you know, probably over a thousand people at some point, their neighborhood park. And so we think about it in that through that lens as well. Yeah. So uh, an unfair mm -hmm. question, where are we now? I know the phase two was initially billed as a 24 month construction experience or yep. so, so we still have into 25 at the very least. Certainly, so the, the construction that started was an early bid package um, for phase two. The design is essentially completed. Um, and so we knew that we could get some things going for that early bid package. And that's, that's mostly infrastructure, utility kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're coming close behind and we're, we're getting very close to bidding out the rest of the project. The, the, the things that you just saw in that video, we're very close to bidding that out and we're waiting for a couple uh, federal permits. And so that's, that can be one of the most difficult parts of this process. It's something that we don't have control over. Mm -hmm. And so um, when you're working with the Army Corps of Engineers and, and levies that they manage, it can be a, a complex and, and long process to do that permitting. And so. We believe we're very close. We're waiting for that one final permit and then we can bid this thing out. It's exciting. And, yeah. and uh, by the way, uh, a quick mention for the website, Riverfront uh, Activity can be yours online and you can see uh, all about that. We'll uh, put that contact information uh, on screen here, there you go, fortwayneparks.org or riverfront.org will also get you there. Uh, one thing we wanna share is that while they're waiting for the permits to be approved, there's no waiting on more construction over at Franke Park. Tell us what's That's going right. on there. Yeah, so um, a few years ago, we did a master plan for Franke Park. Franke Park is our largest park, one of our most visited parks. We have the children's zoo there, the beloved children's zoo, the Follinger Theater, all of those things contribute to a very active park and, and sometimes um, a very crowded park. And so we knew that we wanted to, to come up with a master plan for the entire park to make sure that we can accommodate any kind of growth, but as well as just accommodate parking. And there's not a great circulation system currently in the park and mm. for pedestrians. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna add all of that, but this is the first phase of that plan. So we're looking right now at phase one, which is a new entrance off of Goshen Road in the lower left corner and then that comes in and you sort of pops you out right at this new pavilion. 
Yeah, let's go to the close-up of the map uh, for a second, and uh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, this is on the, the east side, I believe. That's right. So you're coming in off the left, off of Goshen Road, and that, that sort of large block there, that white block in the upper left-hand corner is the new uh, McMillan Family Pavilion. And so that pavilion um, is our largest park pavilion, is rentable, sort of continues our tradition of grand uh, pavilions and parks that are rentable at an affordable cost. And you can see here in this rendering how beautiful it is. Um, it'll seat over 400 people, which is um, something that we've been asked in the past. You know, do you have any facility that'll seat 300 or 400 people? And we didn't. And so this is going to serve that need. But again, rentable by anybody in the city. Um, and rentable at a at a reasonable cost. Wow. Uh, yeah. This next then, this is the west side. This is when Goshen Road is perhaps what tucked in the lower left corner. That's correct. Yep. So we've got the drive coming in. You see a bridge that goes across Byron Creek, the new pavilion, and then it just sort of connects into the the rest of the park. And just off screen there to the right or off the image is the uh, Franke Park Day Camp facilities. Mm -hmm. um, and so this will be that first phase. This is going to connect into the rest of the circulation system in the park. But it's just the first phase. And this will be completed in November. So we'll have a grand opening in November. If you drive by on Goshen, you'll see the new entrance. It's not open yet, but you'll see it. And then here's another view of the, of the new pavilion. Um, I wonder uh, if some may be watching saying, well, I don't see where the theater is in the yeah. map, or I don't see where the zoo is. There is yeah. that much space that is That's right. being stewarded in this case, right? That's right. It's a, it's, a, it's a large park, and this is one little section of the park. Um, the next phase, we haven't nailed down exactly what the next phase is going to be, but I'm, if I had to guess, if you had to pin me down, I would say it's going to involve... Um, it's going to involve some improvements to uh, the parking situation out there. When you have a show at the theater, at the Fullinger Theater, you have the zoo busy, you have somebody renting pavilions, um, they're pretty much at capacity um, for parking. And so we've contemplated, you know, not right in the middle of the park and in the meat of the park, but there's some, there's some spaces up adjacent to Goshen Road that makes sense for parking. That's all in the, that's all in the Franke Park Master Plan, which anybody can, can access and take a look at on the park's website. Wow. Uh, as we uh, have a moment, uh, and we are heading into, as you say, this is the apex of all things, you know, with uh, uh, activity for the, the summer months. Yep. Uh, some general thoughts on how folks can also connect with their communities through Fort Wayne Parks and Rec. Yeah. Well, there's, a, there's, there's hundreds of programs um, that are happening right now in parks uh, throughout the system, and we partner with a lot of different organizations to do things. and. And we have, you know, we have facilities like the Botanical, uh, Follinger Fryman Botanical Conservatory downtown, which is a parks run facility. Um, a lot of these things that are available to our citizens, but also serve as tourist attractions. And so we know that people love parks in Fort Wayne and their neighborhood parks are just as important to them as, as Promenade Park and sometimes more important to people yeah. um, to be able to have access to nature. And so we're, we're certainly um, sort of evangelical about the idea that Spending time outside in parks is, is good for everybody. And I think we saw during the pandemic um, sort of proof of that when the only thing that you really could do sometimes was take a walk in the park. Um, <laughs> and so I think that now we really, even more than we did before, and it's, you know, understand the value of that. And it's, and it's great, you know, that, that time outside, the green space, um, it's great physically, it's great mentally. It has in, implications culturally and with safety and crime and, and learning and all of those things. So we, we take park development, park maintenance, park programming um, very seriously in the department, but we also uh, love to have fun with it as well, obviously. And, and it's an absolute key. Uh, uh, it is family friendly across all age levels, yes. uh, across all sections of the city. Right. Uh, very quickly, there was a reference to a new urban river paradigm that will uh, offer a quality of life that attracts and engages, and that's something that usually you think, uh, well, for a park it should be a bike trail, but right. this is the real deliverable, isn't it? It, it really is, and, it, and you know, there's, there's metrics that you can look at, you know, how parks um, in, increase property values of adjacent, you know, housing and other things, and, and those things are all true, but um, 
it's it's really all about community for us and and parks are places where people gather it's where you meet friends it's where sort of life's milestones happen sometimes yep you know you might see in lakeside park which is near where i live you can see a wedding one day and you can see a, a maybe somebody's 50th anniversary party in the pavilion on the same day um, a little kid learning to walk or ride their bike and so we know it's a it's a special um, place and a special responsibility that we have to to be stewards of those those park properties and those parks. So um, we're, we love to do it and we take it very seriously, like I said. This is a great opportunity then for you to do exploring with your screens and then get the sneakers on and check out all that's available, fortwayneparks.org and you see the phone number as well. And you'll even find a reference to Alec Johnson, our guest today, Deputy Director of Park Planning and Development at Fort Wayne Parks and Recreation. Alec, thank you so much. Thank you, Bruce. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for allowing us to be a part of your evening. For all of us with Primetime, I'm Bruce Haynes. Take care. We'll see you again next week. Good night.